In this video, I'll be discussing finding the charge on the inside and outside surfaces of a conducting object using Gauss's law. The first piece is something that we have already talked about previously. We said that if you have a conductor that's in equilibrium, any excess charge goes to the outside surface of that conductor. We also said that for the conductor in equilibrium, the electric field must be zero inside the conductor. Again, that, that's a previous statement that we've already learned about. The reason that the electric field must be zero inside a conductor in equilibrium is if it's in equilibrium, that means that the charges are not moving. If there was an electric field, it would push on charges, which would make them move. But because we said it's in equilibrium and the charges are not moving, it means that there must be nothing pushing on the charges, causing them to move. Again, this is a property of a conductor in equilibrium. A conductor in equilibrium must have the electric field be zero inside the conductor. And this fact, taking the electric field to be zero, it explains why the excess charge must be on the surface of the conductor. If I draw a Gaussian surface that's inside the conductor, so here we have a very odd shaped surface. I'm drawing some arbitrary shape inside the surface, but we know that the electric field is zero inside the conductor. And so the electric flux through that Gaussian surface must be zero. Electric flux is electric field times area. And if the electric field is zero, even though there is some surface area to this Gaussian surface, because the electric field is zero, the flux is zero. And Gauss's law says that the net electric flux equals Q enclosed divided by epsilon zero. If the net flux is zero, which it is because the electric field is zero, then the enclosed charge must be zero. So inside this Gaussian surface, there is no enclosed charge. All of the excess charge has to be on the outside, on the very edge of that conductor. What if I had a hole inside the conductor and I put a charge in that hole? So I have this same conductor. I remove a little segment of it. And so there's still no charge enclosed. There's no charge that gets pulled to the inside surface. All of the charge is on the outside surface of that conductor. But in the third picture, I'm putting a charge of positive Q into that cavity, in that hole where there wasn't anything. If I place that charge there, this conductor polarizes. Charge gets pulled to the inside surface, and we have a separation of charge. So we talked previously that negative charge would get pulled to the inside surface, but specifically, we can actually figure out how much negative charge gets pulled there. This positive charge that's at the center of this cavity pulls negative charge into this inside surface of the conductor, but with the Gaussian surface that I have drawn, inside my conductor. It's still true that the electric field inside the conductor must be zero, which means that the net enclosed charge is zero. And so it means that the negative charge on this inside surface has to be negative Q to balance out the positive Q that was in that hole. Again, the net enclosed charge is zero. So just going over the steps again, the electric field inside a conductor is zero. We placed our Gaussian surface inside the conductor. So since the field is zero, the flux is zero. And so the charge that's enclosed must be zero. When there was no charge in the cavity, then there was no charge that got pulled to the inside surface. All of the excess charge was on the outside of the conductor. But when I placed an additional positive charge in the center of that cavity, it pulled negative charge to the inside. There's still positive charge on the outside of that conductor, but it pulls negative charge to the inside so that the enclosed charge, when I draw a Gaussian surface inside the conductor, the total enclosed charge must be zero. Let's look at another couple of examples of this. 
So here I have a positive charge of plus 2q that's in this empty area. And I have this metal neutral shell around it. So this blue shell around it is neutral. You can think of this as kind of like a basketball that has really thick walls. Um, so we have this inside surface of the metal shell, and we have this outside surface of the metal shell, but then inside, in the very center, there's this empty area. It's in that empty area that I have that plus 2q placed. So the first step is I draw my Gaussian surface inside the conductor. And so I have this spherical shell, and I'm going to draw a sphere for my Gaussian surface. It's arbitrary exactly how big I draw that Gaussian surface as long as that Gaussian surface is in that conductor. So I have a, my Gaussian surface is concentric. It has the same center as the spherical shell. So I'm drawing a sphere for my Gaussian surface. Again, it, even though in the picture I'm only showing a circle, that's just a cross section. This is in three dimensions, so we have a three-dimensional sphere for my Gaussian surface. We know that negative charge is going to get pulled to the inside surface of the metal shell. And we know that the electric field is zero inside the metal shell. Again, for a conductor in equilibrium, the electric field inside the conductor is zero. That's an extremely important statement that you need to remember. Inside a conductor in equilibrium, the electric field inside the conductor is zero. Because the electric field inside the conductor is zero, the flux through my Gaussian sphere was zero. So the charge on the inside surface of the shell needed to be negative 2q so that the total enclosed charge by the Gaussian surface was zero. I had plus 2q in this hollow space. And so then there has to be negative 2q pulled to this inside surface so that the negative 2q plus the positive 2q adds up to equal zero enclosed charge. But we also are interested in figuring out how much charge is on the outside surface of that metal shell. The charge on the outer surface plus the charge on the inner surface must add up to equal the net charge on the shell. That's always going to be a statement that we know. If you add up the charge that's on the outside surface of a shell plus the charge that's on the inside surface of the shell, those two have to add together to equal the net charge on the shell. Here, our shell is neutral. Because it's a neutral shell, the net charge is zero. There's no net charge on the shell. And so the charge on the outside surface of the shell plus the charge that's on the inside surface of the shell, which is negative 2q, has to add up to equal zero. So the charge on the outside surface of that metal shell was positive 2q. Again, we look at it, we had negative 2q pulled to the inside, which left an unbalanced positive 2q on the outside of that shell. But overall, that metal shell is still neutral. What if we had more than one conducting shell and the shells weren't necessarily neutral? That's what we're going to see in the next example. In this next example, I have a charge of negative 3q that's at the center. And there's empty space around it. And then around it, after that empty space, we have a neutral metal shell. And then we have some empty space. And then we have an outer metal shell that has a net charge of plus Q. So the inner conducting shell is neutral. The outer conducting shell has a net charge of plus Q. But we're going to be talking about the inner surface of the inner shell, the outer surface of the inner shell, the inner surface of the outer shell, and the outer surface of the outer shell. Each of the shells has an inside surface and an outside surface, and we're going to find the charge on each of those four surfaces. And so we start at the very center, and we work our way outwards. I draw a Gaussian surface inside that inner 
conducting shell. There needed to be a positive 3Q that was pulled to the inside surface of that inner metal shell. Again, the charge that's enclosed by that Gaussian surface needed to be zero. And so plus 3Q plus negative 3Q adds up to equal zero. The total charge that's enclosed by that Gaussian surface was zero. So then we can find the charge on the outside surface of that inner shell. We know that that inner shell, that inner metal shell is neutral. And so if there was plus 3Q on the inside, there has to be a negative charge left on the outside of that inner shell. So the outer surface plus the inner surface has to equal the net charge on the shell. So the outer surface plus positive 3Q, the inner charge, equals zero because that inner shell was neutral. And so that outer charge, the charge on the outside surface of the inner shell, had to be negative 3Q. We have positive 3Q on the inside surface of the inner shell. We have negative 3Q on the outside surface of the inner shell. And those two charges add together to equal zero, the net charge on that inner shell. Now what about this outside shell? This outer shell has a net charge of plus Q. So the first thing we have to do is figure out how much charge is on the inside surface. The charge that's on the inside surface of this outer shell is going to be exactly the opposite of the charge that was on the outside surface of the inner shell. The way that we can see this is the charge that was on the inside surface of the inner shell plus the charge that was at the center, those already added up to equal zero. So technically I'm adding everything together, but this negative 3Q at the center plus the positive 3Q on the inside surface of the inner shell, those added up to equal zero. So now I have an unbalanced negative 3Q that's on the outside surface of the inner shell. So on the inside surface of the outer shell, I'm going to need to have positive 3Q. If I draw a Gaussian surface inside my outer shell, the total enclosed charge by that Gaussian surface must be zero. Again, in this conductor, the electric field is zero. Inside a conductor in equilibrium, the electric field is zero, so the electric flux through this Gaussian surface must be zero, so the total enclosed charge must be zero. I had negative 3Q on the outside surface of the inner shell, and so I have to have positive 3Q on the inside surface of the outer shell. So now what about the outside surface of the outer shell? The charge on the outer surface plus the charge on the inner surface has to equal the net charge of that shell. The charge on the outer surface plus the charge on the inner surface, which was positive 3Q, has to add up to equal the net charge plus Q. Again, this outer shell had a net charge of plus Q. So the outer charge plus positive 3Q must add up to equal positive Q. So the charge on the outside surface of that outer shell is negative 2Q. So again, if I look at this, the positive 3Q that's on the inside surface plus negative 2Q on this outside surface adds up to equal the positive Q that's on that outer shell. The main thing for finding the charges on the inside and outside surfaces is just making sure that when you draw your Gaussian surface inside the conductor, that the net charge enclosed is zero. And you start from the very inside and you work your way outwards, so you find the inner surface of the inner shell, and then the outer surface of the inner shell, and then you're able to find the inner surface of the outer shell, and then the outer surface of the outer shell. And you could have two or three or four different shells that you're doing. You just start from the inside and you keep working your way outward. So you'd find the inside surface of the innermost shell, and then the outside surface of the innermost shell, and then the inside surface of the next shell outward, 
and then its outside surface, and then the inner surface of the next shell, and the outer surface of the next shell, and then the inner surface of the next shell, and the outer surface of the last shell. You would just keep working your way outwards until you have found the charge on all of the surfaces.